All right, this one is what? What situation? Side angle side. Not side angle side. Right side angle side. Side side. Of course. All right, so let's label. We have C here. And well, this time we're looking for two angles and only one side here. Okay? So what do you think will be the easiest thing for us to find first? Angle B. Angle B. Because we know angle A is side A. And we know side B, so it would be oh, our best interest to find angle B first. <coughs> Bless you. So let's set it up. Sine of 40, 40 over, three. over 3 equals sine B. B over 2. Sine B over 2. Now this is different. Got you. Capital letters represent angles. And whenever we're trying to find an angle, we're going to use the second sine button, also known as the what? The inverse. The inverse. So we still solve it the same way. We have to cross multiply. The three sine big B. So we get three sine of big B equals two sine forty. Equals two sine forty. Divide by three. I have to divide by three because I got to get my sine B by itself. You get like zero point four. Really weird number. I get some weird number, but then to find B, I'm going to do what? The inverse of I'm going to take the inverse of that number. So whatever that number is, when I type in 2 sine 40 and divide by 3, 25. I'm going to take the sine inverse 25. of it. 25.37. 25.37? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See? 2 sine 40 divided by what? 3. Three. Sine inverse. Wow. <laughs> 25.37. So this angle, angle B is 25.37. Now you find 13 degrees. Uh, Next, we want to find angle, uh, the two angles. angle C. Add up the two angles and subtract it from 180. 114. 0.63. 0.63. 114 degrees. Or 0.63 degrees. And now I can use my law of sines. To find side C. I own this place. Sine of 114.63 over C equals what? What should I use? Should I use B or should I use A? A. A. Because that's given to us. And yes, we are going to have to use an angle that we found to find side C, but there's no other way that we can do that. Okay? So how do we find C? Cross. Cross multiply. C sine 40 equals 3 sine 114.63. Divide by the sine of 40 and C is 4.24. That was the side. And you can always check to make sure you did it right. Remember, the smallest side should be across from the smallest angle, and the largest side should be across from the largest angle. And that's what we have here. Yeah. Question. All right, so this is the situation with side-side angle. Now, you have to be careful when you have this situation, side-side angle, because you could run into a situation where it's ambiguous, and this is called the ambiguous case, okay? When you have side-side angle, there is a possibility that you could have one triangle that fits with these descriptions, you know, side of one, a side of two, an angle of 50 degrees. You could also have no triangle that exist, or you could have two triangles that exist. So you always have to check for the ambiguous case. You always have to check for the ambiguous case when you have side-side angle. I will probably make a note of that. Whenever you have side-side angle, you should check for the ambiguous case. So I'm going to give you an example of each particular situation, okay? You just did one where you have one triangle, okay? So you're going to see the other ones within these next few examples. So let's look at this one here. 
is the side side angle. What should I find first when I'm solving this triangle? Angle A. Angle A. Because I have side C and angle C, and I have side A, but I don't know angle A. So let's set it up. It's going to be the sine of 50 over 1. 50 over 1 equals sine of big A over 2. Sine of big A over 2. Now, whenever I'm looking for an angle, I know I'm going to have to use what at the end? The inverse of sine. The inverse. So I cross multiply. 2 sine 50. 2 sine 50 equals basically sine A, because 1 times anything is just whatever that is. So sine A. How do I find A? Take the inverse. When I take the sine inverse of 2 sine 50, domain error. you run into a domain error. The reason why is because when you do 2 sine 50, you get a number that's bigger than 1. And if you remember anything from the unit circle, what was the highest that that sine graph went to? Think about the graph of sine. What was the highest it went? And the lowest? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's think. You yeah, forgot right. out the two already. Yeah, right. that, was the, that was the domain. That was the one cycle. But remember, it went all the way up, and then it went down, and then it went back up. It oscillated between these two numbers. Oh. Nobody remembers. Let's flip back. Let's try to figure this out. One and negative yeah. one, which means that you can't take the sine or cosine of a number that's bigger than one or bigger than negative one or else you're going to run into a domain error because it doesn't go up that high. It doesn't exist for that. So whenever that happens, you're always going to run into an error, which means that there is no such triangle that will have an angle measure of 50 degrees with a one across from it and then another side that has two. That triangle actually looks like this. Whoa. It doesn't actually reach that third side. Okay? There's no such triangle that will fit this situation. Because. <laughs> Alright? So, there is a situation where you could possibly have zero triangles or no such triangle that fits the situation. Okay? So, you see no triangle. The last example is when you have one triangle. Now, what do you think you're going to have? Two triangles. This is what you always got to check for in big space, only with side side angle. Not with any of the others. So for this one, what do I have to find first? Angle A. Angle A. So let's set it up. Sine of 25 over 1 equals sine of big A over 2. Let's cross multiply. 2 sine 25 equals the sine of A. Then what do I do to find A? I take the inverse. Do I actually get a number this time? Yes. So you get 57.7. Wait, which one? 57. Okay. 57.7? That's it. Now, there is angle A. Now, before you go on to find angle B, this is where you need to check to see if you're going to have more than one triangle. After you find the first angle, after you find the first angle, check to see if you're going to have a second triangle. How do you find out there's two triangles? This is how you find out, okay? Once you find that first angle, you need to subtract it from 180. So that's so after you find the first angle, you subtract that angle from 180. Okay, this is how you figure out if you have two triangles. Take 180 and you subtract 57.7 from it. What number do you get? 122.3. This could potentially be angle A in your second triangle. You get to draw a line from A to 
as you see, I don't know if you noticed, but I switched to another slide that has the same measurements. But as you see, the side that has a one on it, it's moved closer to angle C. Compare and contrast. You see the difference? It has the same measures, but that uh, segment BA is a little closer to angle C. This is how you'll know if you'll have two triangles. Once you subtract that first angle from 180, you add 25, add 25 and 122.3 together, and then subtract that from 180. What do you get? 32.7. If you actually get a positive angle measure, that means you're going to have two triangles. Okay? So let's recap. Once you find your first angle, you need to check to see if you'll have two triangles. Subsection A. You subtract that first angle from 180 to get a potential new angle A. Then you'll basically find the third angle of your triangle and if it's positive, you have two triangles. Which means that you're going to have two sets of answers. You'll have a set of answers for this triangle with angle A being 122.3 degrees. But then you'll also have another set of answers for the triangle that has 57.7 as angle A. Alright? So what you're telling me is So this this is the ambiguous case. You have to check for it. Because because of the fact that angle C is 25 degrees, and side one or side C is one and then one of the other sides is two, that means that there could potentially be two different triangles that fit these stipulations, that have those two sides and that one angle, okay? I talked about slowly, I had you write down your steps so you can try to follow, for reason. yes? So, or can I assume what we're doing next is we're gonna do this triangle, and then with the 122.3, with the same thing we did here, but just with those numbers. Or just those numbers. Exactly. So basically, we're going to solve the triangle here, and we're going to solve that new triangle. So we're going to do it. Change A. Get what? Yeah. So let's finish up this triangle since we already have all of our angles. What's the last thing we need to find? The last side, which is what? B. B. So we can still use C. So sine 25 over 1. Is uh, sine 32.7 over small b. Equals sine 32.7 over small b. Cross multiply. Divide sine 32. And then divide both sides by the sine of 25. 1.3. Nope, we're gonna go. We're gonna go right back to it after we, after you guys get this one down. Okay. That's why we said. That's why I say law of signs for the long day. Yeah. All right. So there's one triangle. Yeah. This one triangle has angles 122.3, 32.7, and 25 degrees, with side lengths 1, 2, and 1.3. Here, what's angle B? 97.3, because you add 25 and 57.7, subtract that from 180. And now to find side B here, you're going to go side 32.7 over 
Sine 25 over 1. Angle C, sine 25 over 1 equals? Sine 97.3 over little b. Sine 97.3 over little b. Cross multiply. And divide? 2.35. Confirmation? Yeah. There you go. Yay. That is the ambiguous case. Yay. So you see an example where you have no triangle, one triangle, or two triangles. When do you, never, when do you <laughs> check to see if you I've have two triangles? After you find your first angle, in which situation do you need to check for the ambiguous case? Side-side angle. Side, side angle. Okay? So what I want you to do now is I want you to try seven on your own. It's a side-side angle situation. I need you to figure out if it's going to be zero triangles, one triangle, or two triangles. Okay? 